What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your man's Nicholas. Representing Big Dogs Gotta Eat, BDGE, Fantasy Football. It is Thursday, so you know it's mailbag slash question and answer day submitted by y'all. If you want a chance to get featured on one of these, if you want me to answer your question possibly, head over to facebook.com slash BDGE Fantasy Football. Sorry, I forgot what my own Facebook page name was for a second. But that's what you gotta do. Head over to the Facebook page, like the page, of course message the page with your question make sure you include your scoring settings make sure you include the opponents that your sit start questions um are relevant to and uh make sure you end that question with a hashtag answer my zam question yes that is zam with a z so we're gonna dive right into the video but of course y'all gotta hear my hot ass intro <laughs> Okay, first question is from my man Aaron Desmond. Was good, Aaron. He says, what's up, Nick? Long time listener here. Thanks for being the GOAT. You already know. Looking to trade for Julio Jones in a 14-man half-point PPR. The Julio owner is 0-3 and panicking and has shown interest in Tevin Coleman. Do I offer Coleman and Watkins for Julio in either Broncos running back? Or do I stick with Coleman in case he ends up being the 1A running back in Atlanta? Rest of season. Hashtag answer my same question. Look at Aaron doing an exemplary job of hitting all of the points that I just said. Tells me the players, the situation, the scoring settings, all of the above. And he hits it with that hashtag answer my Zam question. So, what's up, Aaron? I actually, uh, you know, I remember all my all my longtime uh, listeners and, and people that have, I know you've been following me on Twitter for a minute. For some reason, I could, your, your profile picture is super familiar. Um, but, thank you for the uh, support, Aaron, as always. Thank you for submitting your question. Basically, he's looking at a situation where the owner in his league is 0-3. And this is uh, just a learning lesson for all y'all. Uh, 0-3 owners are teams that you could take advantage of. Hold on, let me... Uh, apparently, there's a fire going on. They know she's getting hot in the headquarters. Let me close my window right quick. Um, so, as I was saying, 0-3 teams are teams that you could take advantage of. And what I suggest doing is looking at their teams, right? An 0-3 team probably only has one or two tradable players. But what you can do is, assuming you have depth, assuming you have bench players that aren't in your lineup, look to stack like three solid bench players for their best player. Because when you're in o you know, you're in 0 3 mode, you're like, ah oh, shit, my first round pick isn't living up to the hype. My second round pick kind of sucks right now. You're like, I need to fix a lot of pieces. Normally 0 3 is because you have a lot of holes in your lineup. So if you offer something like a three for one deal to an 0 3 team, there's a good chance that they're gonna accept that. Um, even if it's for, you know, a guy like David Johnson, say you're offering like, I don't know, off the top of my head, Alex Collins, Trey Burton, and like Cooper Cup or something like that. Um, now, it, you know, you're giving up a lot of players, but none of those guys are going to touch the production that David Johnson is going to put up this year. But that, you know, that's just a, a little lesson for y'all is to try to stack up a lot of depth that's on your bench and trade them for starting, starting players. Um, now, his question specifically he wants to trade for Julio. He wants to offer Julio and um, he wants to get Julio and one of the running backs from Denver along with trading away Tevin Coleman and Sammy Watkins. So he's worried that he doesn't want to he doesn't want to send away Tevin Coleman because if Freeman returns and I tweeted this out the other day that I think even when Freeman returns healthy, Tevin Coleman is likely to be the 1A to Freeman's 1B. Um so, obviously, you know, you'd like to have Tevin Coleman on the roster. However, if you're trading for a Broncos running back, if you can pull off Philip Lindsay in this trade, I would absolutely do the trade. Because I think once Freeman gets back, rest of season, rest of season statistics, I don't think the, the stats between Lindsay and Coleman are really going to be that much different. They're both um, going to be utilized heavily in their offenses, probably a 50-50 snap chair. I think Lindsay would probably end up with more um, receptions, and obviously you're in half-point PPR league, so that's important. And uh, Coleman will probably get more rushes and possibly some goal line work, which Lindsey doesn't have. But it's it's still going to be a committee there. And I don't think Lindsey and Coleman are that off in terms of value for the rest of the season. And then you look at the other two players, and obviously Julio is an upgrade to Sammy Watkins. He doesn't always play like it, right? But um, long term, of course, you would prefer Julio over Sammy Watkins. So the answer to my question is yes. If you could pull off Julio and Philip Lindsey... For Coleman and Watkins, I would absolutely do that. If it's Royce Freeman, that makes that trade a lot less interesting for me. 
I really don't like Royce Freeman rest of the season, especially in PPR leagues. Um, he's not catching anything. He's barely getting targeted, and they're only using him in specific situations, which um, is definitely concerning. So Lindsey is a lot more valuable to me rest of the season if you could pull him off. If it was Royce Freeman, I, I you know honestly, I'd probably still make the trade just because the Julio jump is a really big one for me. Um, but I would much prefer Philip Lindsay. And I actually just made a trade in, in one of my leagues where I traded Mike Evans and Royce Freeman for Devonta Adams and Jordan Reed. So I had uh, I had drafted Greg Olson. He obviously got hurt, and I've been streaming a tight end, so I needed a tight end really badly. Grabbed Jordan Reed in the trade, and then uh, I would honestly say rest of the season, Devonta Adams and Mike Evans are very close. If I had to choose one, like gun to head, I'd probably take Mike Evans for rest of the season, but it's definitely not like a... It's kind of a wash in that sense, and I'm not a fan of Royce Freeman. That team already has uh, David Johnson, Philip Lindsay, uh, Aaron Jones, Carryon Johnson, um, and then Gio Bernard as long as Mixon is out. So I'm pretty good at running back, and you know I, I don't think I'll ever have a, a spot where I need to start Royce Freeman. So that was I, I don't know. It was kind of a wash of a trade, not a wash of a trade, but I think I needed an upgrade at tight end really badly. But Aaron, thank you for the question, sir, and um, I hope that helps you out. Hope, I hope you can land that trade, man. Len McCola, what's up, brother? He asks, I have to have a wide receiver three and a flex. I have Corey Davis versus Philadelphia, Cooper Cup versus Minnesota, Kenny Stills versus New England. Also have Alfred Morris versus Chargers. I could flex, depending on the injury news that comes out, half point PPR. Uh, greetings from Korea. Woo, what's up? You are definitely not Korean, Len, but I'm assuming maybe you're stationed over there. You Maybe you just live over there. I don't know. Hashtag answer my damn question. What's up? Thank you for the question, sir. So you're basically asking to pick two of four. Corey Davis, Cooper Cup, Kenny Stills, Alfred Morris. The first thing I would do is to eliminate Alfred Morris there. His uh, his potential in this Jimmy Garoppolo-less Garoppolo -less offense is, uh, his ceiling is completely lowered right they're not going to get a lot of goal line opportunities he's obviously not the pass catching back there so Morris is out for me right now and it now is down to the two three wide receivers so we have Corey Davis Cooper Cup Kenny Stills the first of which is definitely going to be Cooper Cup for me so you're going into Minnesota defense um, but they actually haven't been amazing against the pass so far this year they are also traveling on a short week cross country pretty much so they're traveling all the way to LA on on Thursday Night Football. So that's very, very, very minimal time to game plan against. They're also going to be without their top... Sorry, let me just pull up uh, a bunch of the notes that I had on this and the uh, and the wide receiver cornerback matchup breakdowns. Um, they're going to be without their top pass rusher, basically, uh, Everest, Everson Griffin, because I don't know what's going on with him, but he's a crazy motherfucker and he's not going to be traveling with the team. So that will give Jared Goff more time in the pocket. Jared Goff has been absolutely on fire and he plays so well. Um, at home, and he's proven that so far this year. And uh, it's hard to sit any of the, the Rams pass catchers at this point, to be honest with you. And Cooper Cup goes off against, let's see, where art thou on the wide receiver cornerback matchup sheet that I'm looking on per pro football focus. And I get people asking me, like, how do I get these numbers? How do I get the matchups? Uh, the wide receiver cornerback matchup sheet is available on pro football focus. I have a link down below as well as like a $5 off discount code. It's their PFF Edge package, which comes with a lot of different cool tools. Wide receiver cornerback matchup is one of them. It's normally $40 for the season, but obviously with the discount down below, it'll be $35 if you want to check that out. Um, Cooper Cup will be going against Mike Hughes, the slot cornerback of Minnesota, who has been one of PFF's worst graded cornerbacks in the NFL. He's actually their worst graded slot cornerback on the year so far, getting killed in terms of yards per route covered, fantasy points per route covered. Um, so Cooper Cup actually has a good matchup, and I don't think this Minnesota defense is really going to be up to the challenge of playing against this high-powered Rams offense at home. So Cup would be my first choice there. It's between Corey Davis and Kenny Stills, and to be honest with you, I want nothing to do with uh, Corey Davis and this Tennessee Titans offense right now. I'm pretty much sitting all of their playmakers at this point. Yes, Corey Davis is getting the targets, but Mariota is clearly less than 100%. He's not able to make most of the throws that you would want him to be making for you to have the slot, the, the skill player in your lineup. So Corey Davis is almost like an auto sit for me. Kenny Stills is, you know, going against the Patriots and they are like seven and a half point underdogs. So you would expect Miami, although they're three, and zero, they are big underdogs in this one. You'd expect them to be throwing the ball a lot. Um, and Kenny Stills is a 95% snap player. So he's going to have plenty of opportunity to, um, you know, to make things happen. So I would go with Stills and I would go with Cooper Cup. Len, thank you for the question, sir. 
And if any of you guys want my rankings, I do weekly rankings on patreon.com slash bdge. Um, I've never done rankings before, but I started doing it this season. So anyone that subscribes to me on patreon.com slash bdge gets my weekly rankings. They also get a private live stream where I'm answering, answering any. So basically, it's just like this, but for an hour long, you guys get a private live stream that goes on YouTube that isn't the one on Sundays. Um, it's on Wednesday nights. So if you're watching this now, the live stream was last night where you can answer any question. So it's just like exclusive access to me, basically. And I answer all your sit starts throughout the week on Patreon or in the live stream. So you can check out patreon.com slash BDGE if you want my weekly rankings, if you want private live stream, master stat sheet, all these other cool bonuses and exclusive things, as well as some early access to uh, my blog posts. Head over there if you want to check it out. All right. So made Maid, I guess. Oh, I'm not even going to try to do your last name. Maid K. Big K asks, I'm in a half point PPR league being offered to trade Christian McCaffrey for Marquise Goodwin and Devonta Freeman. I am the owner of Freeman and Goodwin. Do you think I should accept it for McCaffrey? Hashtag answer my Zam question. Absolutely. Um, Marquise Goodwin. I can't believe someone offered you this trade. Marquise Goodwin's value in Bethard's now CJ Bethard's offense is minimal. If you look at I tweeted this. If you look at the target share between the different positions in San Francisco while C.J. Bethard was the quarterback last year, it was 33% of his targets went to the running backs, which was the highest percentage in the entire NFL. Um, I think it was, I think tight ends had the 19th highest percentage and then running backs got like 49 or wide receivers got like 49% of the targets, which was like 29th or 30th in the NFL. So wide receivers value in that offense plummets immediately. As for Devonta Freeman, of course, I would love to, I love trading away injured players if I can. Um, and when he comes back, there's no telling that he's going to be the starter there. He has not looked good in a while. Chris McCaffrey is a workhorse stud. I don't know why you would even think about this trade. So definitely uh, accept that trade, my friend. And thank you for the question. Steven J. Payne. What a name, Steven Payne. Was good. Answer my Zam question. Week four, which Denver running back should I start versus KC? Or should I get someone from the waiver wire standard league? Also have Eckler and Lynch. So how would I possibly know who's on the waiver wire? I can't answer that part of the question. Um, which Denver running back would I start versus KC? Uh, my initial instinct, even though it is standard league, I'm still going to go with Philip Lindsay. Y'all know I um, am a huge fan of Philip Lindsay, not only this year, but, um, well, this year, yeah, rest of the season. I don't know why, I, I don't know what I was getting at right there. But it would be Philip Lindsay for me. And the reason being, um, Denver is underdogs. Obviously, they have KC coming to town. And uh, Patrick Mahomes is probably going to light this defense up, as he has done to every single defense thus far this year. I expect nothing different in Denver, even though they're supposedly an elite pass defense. They're not really playing it, playing like it right now. Um, so I expect Pat Mahomes to put up a ton of points, and I expect Denver to have to answer for that. And their pass catcher in their offense is clearly Philip Lindsay. So I think Philip Lindsay is going to outsnap Royce Freeman by a pretty marginal difference um and i think he probably racks up between 40 and 60 receiving yards as well as you know 10 to 12 14 carries so i think he probably flirts with you know 90 to 100 total yards and possibly a touchdown so i would definitely be going Lindsay over freeman here i just don't trust freeman whatsoever unless the game script is absolutely perfect so that will be that question thank you steven we'll move on to Another trade question from Noah Johnson. Should I trade away Carlos Hyde and Chris Godwin for Odell Beckham? Full PPR. This is an interesting question for you guys because we have someone who is on the rise in Carlos Hyde. We have someone who hasn't played that well in Odell Beckham. I'm still absolutely taking the Odell Beckham side here. The reason being is Odell Beckham's numbers should be much higher, right? For the amount of volume he's gotten and um, how he's been using this offense his numbers are going to come. He hasn't been used any differently this year as he has the last four years in which he's put up, you know, 1,500 yards a year and double-digit touchdowns. I was looking at air yards data um, and some other things. So basically, Odell has the second highest percentage of his team's air yards. He has 48% of the Giants' air yards on their offense. He has a 30% target share, which is elite wide receiver one type numbers. Those aren't changing anytime soon. Um, now you have Evan Ingram out, so... That I don't know if that's going to lead to an, uh, an increase in targets for Odell for the time being, but like if anything, that can't hurt Odell realistically. Um, should I trade away Carlos Hyde? Obviously, Carlos Hyde is someone whose value is going to go up. He's already playing really well, but his value is going to go up thanks to Baker Mayfield getting on the field. Chris Godwin, you know, at best, he's still running behind Deshaun Jackson and Mike Evans, and I love Chris Godwin. Y'all know that. But to get a guy like Odell Beckham in a full PPR league, especially, is something that I. Uh, 
I would definitely suggest doing so. So he's someone that's that's probably on my buy low candidate list, along with a guy like Keenan Allen. Um, so Odell Beckham, Keenan Allen, Sony Michelle is a guy you should be buying low because he's getting he's seeing a touch on like 86 percent of his snaps or something so far. So they clearly want to use him like a workhorse there. Um, Rex Burkhead has been getting almost phased out with Sony Michelle back in the lineup. And Sony Michelle, you know, once that team finally turns around and starts getting, you know, more goal line touches and starts scoring more altogether, the Patriots, this, this happens every year with the Patriots and people love to go wild about it. Like, oh, are the Patriots done? Is this finally the end of the era? Like, you know, if you look, if you look back at the last like five years, it's the same exact thing with the Patriots every year. They start a little bit slow right? They lose maybe a couple of the first games in the first month of the season or whatever. Everyone goes nuts and then they adjust. They do that better than any team in the NFL. They realize what their weaknesses are and they start to game plan around them. So I'm not worried about the Patriots offense. And as someone like Sonny Michelle is getting a ridiculous amount of work um, in reference to the number of snaps he's getting. And now Rex Burkhead is not only getting phased out a little bit, but he's also hurt. So Sonny Michelle is a is an easy buy low for me. So I was saying Sonny Michelle, Keenan Allen, uh, oh Odell Beckham of course is on this list. So yeah, I would make that trade for Odell. Thank you for the question, my man Noah. We got a couple more here for today. I think we got three more. Joey Blatt. Blatt, 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 Blatt. By the way, appreciate all the in depth content throughout the football season and off season. Week four running back flex starter standard scoring. I have Gordon and Fournette, which I assume are shoe wins to start. But for flex, I have James Conner versus Baltimore, Chris Carson versus Arizona, and Demarius Thomas versus KC. Thoughts? So as I always do, I would try to narrow out the guys I don't want right away. And that would definitely be Demarius Thomas. Um, he is, you know, he, he's not someone I want to start in my lineup at all, especially in, in standard scoring, I should say. So if it's full PPR, Demarius Thomas is getting the targets and he's catching a lot of passes. And, you know, it is going against Kansas City. So this uh, has potential shootout there from that side of the ball. But... Uh, I want nothing to do with him in standard scoring because he could end up going like seven for 60 with zero touchdowns and that's not going to do anything for you. So you ask James Conner versus Chris Carson. Um, You know, Chris Carson's obviously coming off that like 30 plus touch game and everyone's very, very high on him. I would actually probably sell Chris Carson at this point. If you could sell him high, that is, he's a candidate for that list for me. Because, you know, we've seen this before where it's like one week, one of the running backs dominate touches. The next week, it's the opposite. And then Pete Carroll comes out and says something fucking ridiculous, like he was tired or he was gassed. And then the next week, it's back to the other thing where, you know, it might be a 50-50 split in touches and volume. So I don't really trust Chris Carson right now. Um, You know, it is a good matchup against Arizona, but I would much rather have James Conner in my lineup, especially since they are the home team, right? Baltimore, I mean, Pittsburgh and, and Big Ben overall just play so so well at home um they pass the ball a lot more and they end up you know just scoring a lot more points and i think that um i think the usage that we've seen out of connor i know he's not playing up to you know his his week one standard i don't know why anyone would expect him to do that but so far you know he's averaging so much involvement in this offense so he had 31 carries the first game eight carries the second 15 in the third game however he's getting targeted so much in the offense, right? He has five catches in three straight games. Those are like Le- Le'Veon Bell type numbers, you know, maybe a couple more receptions. If, uh, if you're a Bell owner, you would, you would expect, but five catches a game and he's gotten 57 receiving yards, 48 receiving yards, 34 receiving yards. So if you are in, um, it doesn't matter what type of league you're in, but he's adding those extra yards. If he can't get it done on the ground, that's okay because he scored three touchdowns in three games. Um, he's gotten, uh, plenty of, of receptions, and I think the fact that they are at home and Big Ben plays a lot better means that he probably will get even more involved at home. So uh, James Conner would be my RB1 there, and then you said you need to flex. Okay, so it would be it would be James Conner as the RB, Chris Carson as the flex. Um, I'm not sure why you asked for... You said RB slash flex. Since you're already playing Gordon and Fournette, I'm assuming you don't start three running backs. So if I had to pick one, it's, it's James Conner. I'm not sure I understand your question, but I think I got it. So thank you for the uh, Zick question, Joey. Blah, 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 blah. Who should I start this week? Ryan Fitzmagic at Chicago or Philip Rivers or San Francisco? I don't even know why I picked this one. Thank you, Jeremy Mann, for the question. I appreciate it. However, this is probably the easiest question I will get all week. And it is, I mean, actually, I can understand why it's a little difficult considering Fitzmagic. Magic has gone for 400 passing yards in three straight games. He is the first quarterback in NFL history to do so. However, he is arguably up against one of the toughest pass defenses in the NFL in Chicago on the road. I expect his magic to run short in this one in week four. And this is the game where um, 
he comes back down to earth. On the other side, you have Phillip Rivers, who is passing the ball lights out, going against San Francisco, who have been absolutely torn up. Uh, Phillip Rivers and the Chargers are going to absolutely dominate time of possession this week, as we've said many times, the 49ers are going to be without Jimmy Garoppolo, so they're not going to move the ball well on that side of things. Rivers and the Chargers should have the ball in their hands for the most time and uh, and just kill them through the air, as well as on the ground, probably, too. But their game plan is clearly get the ball to their backs in space, and they're, and they're throwing the ball a ton um, to Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. So Rivers is the clear play for me, but thank you for your question, Jeremy. And we move on to the final question. And before we do so, I want to thank today's sponsors for the video. Y'all already know it's FantasyJocks.com. I'm actually repping some swag by them right now. They are the industry leader, the fantasy football or fantasy sports industry leader in terms of gear for your league. Whether it's a belt, whether it is a trophy, whether it is a ring. They actually just came out with a brand new ring, the version 4 ring, which is actually pretty beautiful. I'll put a picture up on the screen right now for y'all so you can... Uh, so you can check that out. Um, and you can use promo code TAKE10 or Taco Court for 10% off your order. I'm telling you, it makes a league way more enjoyable when you're playing for something on the line. You can get your team's names engraved on the trophy that you get or the belt that you get. So you can get the list of winners over the previous years. It's pretty neat stuff. So fantasyjocks.com. Check them out. Link will be in the description below. Use that promo code. I got you, baby. Last question comes from Ken. Kenny G. Ooh, smooth, my man. He says, hashtag answer my Zam question. What up, Nick? In two of my three full PPR leagues, I got Pat Mahomes, fortunately. Very fortunately. However, the other one I got, Andrew Luck. What do you think I should do with him? Write it out with him or start streaming depending on the matchup. So, first off, I get a ton of questions from people asking me, like, quarterback questions. And they always include, like, PPR. Like, you guys know that it makes no difference in... Um, in quarterback situations, right? Like half PPR standard or whatever. So what I will say is Andrew Luck is absolutely not the quarterback one that, you know, he was in prior years. He is becoming a dink and dunk guy. However, however, I think we're not giving him enough credit for what he's done based on the matchups that he's had. So in week one, he played Cincinnati and he put up 319 passing yards, two touchdowns, about 20 fantasy points in regular four point per passing touchdown leagues. Week two, he was at Washington. Last week, he was at Philadelphia. Those are two very, very, very difficult road matchups. And I actually want to pull up Football Outsiders uh, pass defense DVOA. And I'm pretty sure both Philly and Washington are going to rank pretty highly among pass defenses. I know they allow... Um, I know I know Washington has been very, very good against the pass. So, so Washington is ranked eighth overall in terms of Football Outsiders pass defense DVOA. Um, who's the other matchup? Cincinnati was his first game. They are ranked 13th in the NFL in terms of pass defense DVOA. And Philadelphia, where you at, though? And they are 11th. So he's, he's faced off against three very tough passing opponents. And two of them have been on the road. So I can understand why you're getting down on him. However, his matchups get much easier now. Um, and I think he puts up a very good week for, uh, for the Colts this week. And they have a home game against Houston. And then after that, let me pull up the matchups. Let me pull up the rest of his schedule real quick. Takes Houston at home. New England on the road should be a high-scoring affair or a lot of volume. The Jets on the road is going to be a tough game because um, they've been very good against the pass. Buffalo at home, at Oakland, and then a bye. So I would say four out of the next five games, Andrew Luck will be very, very, very startable in your lineup. Um, I think that people are getting a little bit too down on him because of the matchups that he's had and they're not really aware that like Washington is an extremely tough road game as well as just being on the road I think people underestimate the impact that being on the road has on not only your team overall but fantasy players and and their stats right especially quarterbacks being on the road is very 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 tough to do and whenever there's a tiebreaker I'd almost always go with the home team or the home quarterback um in terms of you know fantasy or anything like that so that being said uh Obviously, you can always stream quarterbacks and play the matchup there. I'm not saying that's a bad idea. However, um, I, I think luck is probably going to be someone you can use. And it always depends on who's on your waiver wire. Like I said, you might want to grab like Andy Dalton if he's available because he has a really nice slate of games over the next five weeks. And uh, and I would check, you know, what I would do is look at Andrew Luck's, and this is advice for anyone streaming quarterbacks or anyone who's got like an iffy QB1, 
Look at the look at his schedule for the rest of the year, right? Look at his schedule and then mark off all the games in which you probably won't be comfortable starting him. So obviously, like if Andrew Luck plays against Jacksonville and then he's on the road against like Denver or whatever, those are a couple weeks in which you're not going to want to start him. So you mark down the, the the number of those weeks, right? And then go look on the waiver wire and only look at those specific weeks for which you don't want to start him, and then see who has the best matchups. Don't just pick a guy based on names or or, or a player or anything like that. Look at specifically what you would need in order to like counteract the bad matchups with Andrew Luck. So that would be my advice. I think Luck's going to be fine for this week. And otherwise you can um, try to ride it out with him over the next four or five weeks. And I think he gets better and progressively better as the month goes on. Um, but again, check the schedule, see if there's any better streaming options during his difficult matchups. And that's just advice for anyone streaming quarterbacks. And uh, I want to say thank you for the question today, Ken. And that will wrap up this week's Q&A mailbox. Again, you guys can always hit me up on... In the comments section below, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed, found it valuable. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We do mailbag every Thursday. We do top DFS plays and wide receiver cornerback matchups every Saturday. And we do my top waiver wire ads every Tuesday. All of these can also be found in the blog version of this on BigDogsFantasy.com. Just head over to the blog section. And um, and that's really it for today. So if you want my rankings and stuff, it's Patreon.com slash BDGE. And I will see y'all on Saturday. So, peace.